Hey, come with me. And Keely Shea Smith is not in the garden today, but has a great idea for you, and I'm worn out. I do. Imagine taking magazine pages like this and turning them into a beautiful work of art. Well, that's just what my friends Michael Evan has done today, and I'm going to show you an easy home version that you can do too. Sounds great. We'll be right back with those Father's Day fashions. Good morning. And just in time for Father's Day, we'd like to say Happy Father's Day to you and yours. Fathers, mothers, children everywhere. Happy Father's Day. Wave. Happy Father... Okay, wave. Happy Father... <laughs> Happy, Happy Father's Day. <laughs> well, let me tell you, after that opening, I could use a little break. Thank goodness we're in the park today. They built this beautiful, beautiful set. It's today. wonderful. Our home park. And with me today is Angela DeJoseph. Father's Day is this Sunday. And has got some great gift ideas. Dana, you know, the number one complaint on Dad's list is the ugly tie. Yes. It's time that we stop giving Dad this. Okay, okay. you've got some good news yes. for Dad, right? I'm going right? to show you all different wardrobes you can give to Dad. All right, we're okay. going to start off today with Dallas Rain. Oh, baby. Hi, guys. Oh, man, and his daughter, Elizabeth. Hi, hi. Dad. How are you? Hi, hi. 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 hi there. How are nice. you? Turn around so we can see yeah. how gorgeous you look. What are they wearing? We put the father and daughter in a wonderful black and white ensemble. Black and white is still good, a good color combination. What I love about Dallas's outfit is that we took different patterns and experimented with it. One on the sweater, another one on the shirt, and then these lovely black linen pants. This is from J.T. Beckett Collection, which is available at J.C. Penney Store. But it's very comfortable and very cool. So this is for a dad who likes to look very stylish. It's a very fashionable look. Mm -hmm. And then look at Elizabeth. We put her in black and white also. A cool little jumper. And we put a nice little crop t-shirt with it. This is also from J.C. Penney. But both of them are dressed perfect for a picnic or a day in the park. Well, you got big you. plans for Father's well, Day? Well, we've got all this waiting. You'd like to join us? Oh, I gotta go. I, we have some other dads to go to. Come back and see us. Oh, okay. okay. We'll Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Happy Father's okay, Day. Okay, thank you. And another... Boy, they don't make dads like... These guys are gorgeous. Oh, My yes, dad's got gray hair. Not like this. These are TV dads. We have another great-looking TV dad, Shadow Stevens, and his yes. daughter, Amber. They were out shopping. Yes. In Beverly Hills. They were shopping at a store called Sammy Dinar for men, which is in Beverly Hills. And Sammy Dinar dresses a lot of stars. And this is a wonderful outfit on Shadow. Shadow likes to be casual. So he likes to wear jeans. And we put him with a wonderful jacket. This is an interesting combination to take an elegant double-breasted jacket and team it with something like a t-shirt. But this is a look that Shadow likes. And think about it, when you're picking out something for your father, get something that fits his lifestyle. All right. And over here we have another great-looking dad. Yes. This is one of my favorites. And mine, too. Singer-songwriter James Ingram and Hi. his daughter Jennifer. Hi. Nice to Hello meet you. There. How are you? You guys are looking great. You, you got look... some popcorn in the park. You want to looking turn around great. here? How are you so doing? we can see what you're wearing. Isn't this great? Jennifer has on a nice little two-piece outfit. We have her in a, a black tee. Actually, it's cotton, so it's going to be cool. And then we put her in a nice little skirt that has suspenders on it, a little ruffle around that. We also got that from J.C. Penney, the children's division. Mm -hmm. And then, James, we went to, again, we went back to Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. And this <laughs> is from... This. This is from Carol and Company, which is one of the oldest men's stores on Rodeo Drive. And what they do in the store is help you pick out the outfit. So if you're not sure, take something in of, of Dad's and show it to them in the store, and they'll help you pick out something that'll fit his style. Oh, that's great. What do you think? Huh? You got a lot of other children at home, too, besides Jennifer. Four. Four others Four. Yeah. besides Jennifer. You can have a busy Dad's Day. Yeah, happy Father's Day. Yeah, happy Father's Thank Day. You. Thanks Thank for you. coming down. James, Thank, you. No, Thank you, Jennifer. Now, what's the name of your latest single that's out? I've been hearing it on the radio. Um, I don't have the heart. I don't have the you heart. You don't have the heart. Yes, you do. <laughs> Go back. Have a good time. Thank you right. for being here. Thanks. Thank you. And I think... I think Shadow and his daughter are, are still, still shopping. shopping. And we had Amber pick out some ties for her dad. Amber is a fashion consultant. Yeah. She knows the right tie to pick out for her dad. So here she was in the store with Shadow. She's got on a cute little dress. And we put Shadow in a fabulous suit. This is also in Sammy Dinar. And notice the tie. It's sort of a tropical print. When you're going to pick out a tie for dad, yes. go for something that's a little bit bold. 
wonderful, very elegant looking suit. Yeah, let Dad take some chances, right? Yes, and also we put a little lapel pin there that was silver. That's a little bit of something that's really a fashionable dad. Not for okay. everybody, though. All right. Well, okay. speaking of fashionable dads, we have Brad Mall from General Hospital in this and a not very oh, happy no. son, Hunter. Oh. Well, he well, got he, a little scared. He stole Dallas's cherries, and now he's afraid he's going to jail. <laughs> Check him out. Oh, you guys have on the nautical look today. It's yeah. okay, Hunter. You can yeah. eat the cherries. Yeah, I think we're going overboard right now. <laughs> no, you look great. Okay, we put Brad in a wonderful, another cotton sweater. And again, for the summertime, you don't want to wear wool sweaters, but cotton sweaters are perfect. This one is wonderful with this nice pattern in this blue color. And we also teamed it with a nice pair of white pinstripe pants and this is from the hunt club collection available at jc penny and little hunter has on a nautical look too. kind of hard to tell but it's great looking i promise it's very cute on the front he has a nice little anchor motif on his t-shirt and a cute little pair of white shorts and a cute little toy yeah oh, poor baby <laughs> trust us it's adorable right hunter, got... i won't get paid <laughs> We got Hunter's outfit also at the J.C. Penny Children's Division. Oh, well, thanks. Thank you, Hunter. Have a good time, Father. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you. Hunter, come back and see us. He will never be back. He doesn't like us. I don't know what we did. And Shadow Stevens is still, still shopping. shopping. Yes, we call this Shop Till You Drop. Shadow is in a wonderful taupe suit. This is a, he's another... Getting, he's getting kind of touched here. Yes. He wiped a tear from his eye. Also, it's a, another one that's oversized, which I'm saying this is the new fashion direction that the suits are going with. Double-breasted, oversized suits is the way to go. And again, a kind of a jazzy excitement in the tie. And a lot and of Amber, excitement Amber, in the tie. Amber picked that tie out for oh, Dad. Oh, that's great. And look who we have over here, Norm Nixon and his daughter Vivian. Hello, Basketball Hello. star. Basketball star extraordinaire. Hi there. Did you Hi. have trouble fitting Norm? No, actually we didn't. He's actually a standard size. Yeah? Yes, he is. And he, he just has a jumped. Just jumped. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He is on a wonderful suit by Luciana Ferrosi. And this is made out of a combination yes. of wool and polyester, so it's going to keep him looking very cool <laughs> and crisp. It's perfect for a businessman, because you can travel in this suit, go on an airplane, come off, and it'll resist all the wrinkles and still look wonderful on you. Do you do a lot of business now? I mean, you're, you're retired, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I retired a year ago, yeah. so I'm uh, in the real world right so now. So you need the businessman <laughs> look. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And what is Vivian and wearing? And Vivian has on a cute Vivian. little dress with a little bib and a bow in the front. This is from Martha Two. And this is also available at J.C. Penny. But this is a cute little party dress, and this is perfect sure. for her to go on a date with Dad for Father's Day. All right. Well, you guys look great. And do you have big plans for Father's Absolutely. Day? Absolutely. Just spending the day with them. Those I mean, are big plans. That's a big. Those plan. are the only kind of plans you need. Thank yeah. you, Norm. Nice Thank to you. meet you. Right. Thank you, Vivian. Thanks, Thank Vivian. you, sweetie. She's looking at herself. Nice Thank you, Angela. Thank you so much. Next, learn how to protect your family from the sun's damaging rays. Don't go away. worship the suntan despite recent warnings a lot of warnings that the sun is very dangerous and here to tell us about the dangers is dr. Michael Resnick also joining us hi Michael also joining us is skin cancer patient Deborah Shemish welcome Deborah. thank you very much hi, how are you doing? Uh, we'll get to your story in just a minute but Michael I yeah. think this is it's summertime everybody's out right. in the sun Sunday's Father's Day everybody's gonna be all in the parks mm. the beaches everywhere is any sun safe well, I'm going to give you a surprising answer. The answer is no. None. Um, and the American Academy of Dermatology agrees with me, so yeah. it's not just my opinion. You see, what we're now learning is that the skin remembers all the sun insults over the years. Yeah. And that leads to the elastic breakdown, it leads to discoloration, and unfortunately, it eventually leads to a lot of skin cancers. Right. Matter of fact, right now we're in the middle of a skin cancer epidemic in this country. We expect 600,000 new cases this year. And some of those will be fatal. That's right, 8,000 deaths. And unfortunately, again, it's not just the older people. We're seeing a lot of women under the age of 40 dealing with this problem. Already? Already. All right. Well, Deborah, you were diagnosed yes. with skin cancer 10 years ago. Yes. Uh, 
how did you know you had it or did you even know? Well, the only reason that I knew that something was wrong with me is there was a black mole and my mother kept saying to me, check that out, check that out, check that out. I was at the gynecologist's office and the gyne you know how you have your arms back up to be checked and the gynecologist said to me, oh my God, what is that on your arm? And I said, I have no idea. She says, you are going to see this dermatologist and she sent me a letter the same day. And, they told and I went to go see it, they resected it and they told me it was a stage between a stage four and a stage five melanoma, which is pretty damn serious. Yeah, it Excuse is. me for swearing, but it was. It's okay. Yeah. If it's okay with you, you know, a suntan lasts, what, two, three days, but the scar lasts forever. Do you mind if I show everybody no, what that looks like? This is, this is the scar, and this is after, I don't know if we can get a good shot of that, this is after two plastic surgeries. Two. Two. So, I mean, it's real important for everybody to understand what we're dealing with here and, and, and the dangers. Yeah, but they removed the skin cancer. Yes, they did. What happened after that? Well, they told me because of the <clears throat> stage of the cancer, it had metastasized to my lymph gl uh, glands. They told me that I'd be lucky within five years if it didn't come back. And... Uh, Sure God enough. forbid it did come back and it came to my, it went to my stomach, from my stomach to my pancreas, from my pancreas to my ovary to my fallopian tubes and uh, I would not worship the sun, I would, you know. You didn't spend a lot of time in the sun? Uh, I spent a fair amount. I don't think I was a sun goddess, but mm -hmm. I do feel that I, I, I did, you know, go out and get a nice bathing suit tan, a little glow, a little healthy glow. A healthy glow. A yeah. healthy glow. In quotes. Yeah. Yes. What, what's your situation today? How do you see Well, uh, as of February, they told me I was in remission, but I have, on, to be honest with you, I have not had the greatest amount of health. I mean, I seem to come down with everything, mm -hmm. every, you know, viral, bacterial infection, and, uh, you know, and, and uh, as we discussed earlier, you know, children and family members have a predisposition of 50% catching or getting the same That's diseases right. I have. So it is inherent, uh, I believe, part inherent and part of, you know... Caused by the sun. Definitely caused by the sun. You know, I think people don't realize that just... You know, they think that if you get a skin cancer, you remove it and you're fine. You know, well, what can we do to, to check ourselves okay. to detect it? Right. Well, the first thing we have to know is that there's three different kinds of skin cancer, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not all um, the melanoma that you know. But the first kind is called a basal cell cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the kind that is pretty easily resectable. It uh, metastasizes late. It usually looks somewhat like this, an ulcer or maybe even a white bleb on the skin. Um, if you see this, you have to get it checked. The next kind you have to be concerned with is a squamous cell. This looks a little angrier, and in fact, it acts that way too. It's more aggressive. Um, but again, it usually can be cured. But the kind that Deborah had was a melanoma, and that's the most dangerous kind. You see that right here. We exactly. have an easy way, though, to remember how to check yourself for this particular kind of cancer. And that's called the ABCD rule. A stands for asymmetry. In other words, if you drew a line right through there, you'd see that one side doesn't look like the other. And that means it's asymmetrical. Okay, B is for border. And again, you'd see this border is very irregular and notched. This is the kinds of things you want to look for. C okay. is for color. And again, here, if the mole is one color, that's probably okay. But if it's more than one, as you see here, kind of brown and also black, that's a danger sign. It could be colors, other colors too, different sure. hues, like sure. reds or yellows, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And then D is for diameter or size. And the rule of thumb here is <clears throat> if it's as big as the eraser on the top of a pencil, that's danger, and we need the doctor to see it right away. All right. Well, yeah. and as I said, this is summertime. I mean, we, we are going to be in the sun. Right. Give us some things that we can do knowing we're going to be in the sun. I mean, we can't okay. stay out. We can't no, stay you're indoors. Right. No, you're right. Um, first of all, you want to do is stay out of the tanning salons. Let me just make that really quick. But um, I thought they didn't use the UVB rays, so they were a little safer. Well, they are safer in that they don't use the B rays, but their claim that the UVA rays are safe is not correct. I mean, our new information is that the A rays still will cause a cancer and still will lead to the skin, you know, the, the skin damage. So what you want to do is be honest with yourself. But when you do get out in the sun, the things to do, first of all, are to use, obviously, a good sun tanning lotion. Mm -hmm. Everybody's pretty well tied into knowing about SPF factors, knowing that they should have a 15. But what they don't know is a new information is that you need a broad spectrum. And that's one that will cover, as we've been saying, the UV... 
UVA. We had a light okay. pop in the Something studio. Something popped. Okay. Yeah. A UVA and a UVB ray protection. And one brand that does that is called Photoplex. And I'd like people to know about that. There'll be new brands that'll come on right. line pretty soon. Of course, when you're out there, you also want to protect your eyes because it's another thing that the sun can damage. So you want to get a good pair of sunglasses that have a UV protection label right on them. Okay. And then if it's a really sunny day, you want to cover up. You want to maybe use a, a good broad brim hat and possibly a good uh, cover up. You know, the Australians have an interesting way of remembering this, okay? What is they, it? They say, uh, before you go out in the sun, you should do slip, slop, and slap. Which is? Which is slip on a shirt, slop on some suntan lotion, <laughs> and slap on a hat. All right. And if we could all remember that, yeah. um, the Cancer Society says we could cut out 400,000 cancers a year. Yeah. So that would be terrific help for all of all us. All right. And Deborah, good luck. Thank you very good much. Good luck. We'll be thanking you so much. Thank you. 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 All this information will be, of course, in newsletter number 127. And next, today's winning how-to video has a delicious recipe for a sandwich that's a pizza. It's a pizza witch. Medical segment is brought to you by Advil in tablets or caplets, advanced medicine for pain. Today's how to video contest winner is Barbie Hartsfield of Tallahassee, Florida, who made some delicious pizza witches. And she and her daughter Samantha have a very unusual way to demonstrate their recipe. Take a look. <laughs> On the phone with us now and I have to tell you that this is a first. Barbie is at a pay phone down in Tallahassee, Florida because they're on vacation at Disney World so we had to get a hold of her at this pay phone down there. Barbie, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Dana. <laughs> this is a first. That's great. How long did it take you to make the video? Well, it took about two days. Two and days? I had to do a lot of retakes. Well, uh, how come? Well, working with a child, I couldn't... Uh... It just took longer, I guess. Yeah. You said working with a child. Your daughter, Samantha, is so cute in it. How did you get the, the special effect, the sped-up results? There? Well, we, uh, we like to dance, so when we filmed ourselves dancing, we found that if you played it back at double speed, it really added a unique touch. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> What'd you do with all the extra pizza witches if you had to shoot for two days? You made a lot of pizza witches. Well, my whole family's been eating pizza witches for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can freeze those. You know, we have a home show tip that you can freeze them and take them out, and they're a real quick dinner, right? Yeah, I need that too. <laughs> all right, and I understand your husband calls you Barbie Spielberg now? Yes, I spent so much time making how-to how videos. He's nicknamed me Barbie Spielberg. All right, well, I enjoyed it. we've got your check here. I know you can't see a television, but we've got your check, and it's in the mail. 
And you're, uh, of course, in the running for our $1,000 weekly winner, which is tomorrow. And have a good time. Oh, thank you. Okay. And by the way, if you didn't get a chance to, thanks. If you didn't get a chance to get all the ingredients in her pizza, which is, it'll be in newsletter number 127. Now, coming up, Keely Shea Smith is going to show us a wonderful way to make paper mosaics. Thelma Williams is going to show us how to make grapefruit baskets, a great way. And also, Julia McGinnis, a workout for tension and stress. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Home Show. I am partner, partnerless today. Gary Collins is on a plane headed for Three Rivers, Michigan. And you know why? Well, they invited him to take part in their water festival parade. And he'll be hosting the show live from Three Rivers tomorrow. And I'll be holding down the fort here in Los Angeles. So while the cat's away, as they say. Keely Shea Smith has an easy way to make beautiful paper mosaics from magazines. And Thelma Williams will show us how to decorate our tables with grapefruit baskets. Uh, but right now, I have some, I, we have some ideas to relieve tension, stress, and sore throats, and they come from a real expert, somebody who ought to know, opera and concert star Julia McGinnis. Please welcome her. Hi. So, well, you look relaxed now. Yeah. No tension in you now, right? No, completely. You don't have to sing. We're going to make you sing in a few minutes. Oh, thanks. Now, what are some of your, your favorite roles you've... you've... Well, I, uh, Lulu, Carmen... Salome. I brought a picture of Carmen and I brought yeah. a picture of Salome. Actually, this, the dance of Salome, that's Carmen. Yeah. And that's uh, Salome. Ooh. Yeah. You know, most, most opera stars you picture as being, you know, much broader girth, as yes, they say. Yes, this is true. This is true. But I can't, I can't do it. I just yeah. can't. Do you travel all over the world? Yes. Yeah, all over the place. I travel a lot and I get real tense and, and if you sit in a plane and you're hunched over yeah. for like 12 hours or something and you have to get up and your lungs are not breathing anymore, really. Yeah. So in London I learned this incredible um, thing from this uh, guy who's actually a physical therapist and he takes sports people who've been, have their bodies ruined and dancers mm -hmm. who can't, you know, really have done something to their legs and he actually aligns their body again because that's what he says is wrong with them. They've gotten too tense someplace and they as they dance or as they move, they put their back out of whack mm. or their leg, whatever. So, uh, what? let's just do it. Okay, so what show he, us some yeah. of these exercises from London. They're really, so this is London, right? Okay. Yeah. But Imported. It's, it's really simple, and <clears throat> the principle is really from here. It's actually this, here to here and here. And if you, you know, like from holding a handbag or sitting like this, a lot yeah. of people don't have, you have straight shoulders underneath those pads. <laughs> yeah, underneath <laughs> the pads. <laughs> underneath the pads, these are straight shoulders. Well, most people are sort of hunched over. So what he does, basically, is he starts you know, sort of that you rotate your back right. nicely and smoothly and you hang your arms and you swing them back and forth, you know, like a little kid does. Yeah, I, mean, I think, two I think children. Every, yeah, two okay. children. I think everyone I know, the tension yeah. usually exactly. piles up right here. Yeah. So this and is it's perfect. there and it actually ends here. Right? Yeah. And then you're, for the rest of the day, you're a wreck, yeah. right? So then what he does is, is after you've done that, which sort of makes heavy arms, right? Okay. Then you put your arms up like this. Yes. Well, and you swing them down and around like okay. that, right? It's and hard really, to do. This is kind of cumbersome. You should wear comfortable but clothing you for this. swing them down and okay. up and swing them down and up. And then you turn here and you turn here. And the good part is this, is that you do that. Oh, okay. I mean, it's hard you just, that. You're rotating yeah. at the you're shoulder, rotating. keeping your neck Yes, keeping your neck, keeping your neck down, keeping your shoulders not down. Up like this. And you're rotating this way because most people do this and they never do this. Uh-huh. And you do this, you keep on doing this back and forth, and then you do this, you see? Yeah. Which is, I guess swimming would, would be closest to this, which right. is actually fantastic. And you open up your lungs from here to here that way. So that's that. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Okay, how long do you do this and how often would you say? I would do it actually before I sing, because then you yeah. really, you know... You see, but, my voice is a little lower and a little higher at the same time. Right, yeah. But say those of us that don't sing. They should do it when they get up in the morning, and they should do it after they've been sitting for a long time. And um, I don't know if you've been working hunched over. Yeah. It's nice to do it once or twice a day. It takes five minutes, but it's really fantastic. Yeah, and maybe do it before you start getting the tenseness. Yeah, you know? that's why I say a couple of times a day, because okay. this happens, you know. Yeah. This, hello, hello. I mean, it, it's simple, but it's, it's a great, I mean, I, yeah. I can feel it. Do you feel it? Yeah. It's very simple, yeah. and it's, it really works. 
works, I know. All right, now you have a great sore throat remedy that is so easy. Yes. This I mean, it's one of those things you, you think, why didn't I think of that? I know, I know. Well, I have to think of it because I refuse to take any cortisone or anything, which a lot of uh, singers, I'm a Scientologist, so I will not take any, anything that will go into my body and do mm -hmm. things to my body and my mind. So okay. what I've found is in Vienna, this is called an Ölfleck. Ölfleck? Yeah. That's the, this is an old flag, yes. and what you do is, is Dr. Kirsten. <laughs> Dr. Kirsten showed me this because he used to treat all of the uh, opera singers in the, in the Vienna Opera. So I won't, I won't put this on here, but you take baby oil if you're in a hotel or if not. You take warm-up baby oil and you put it on, on. This is at night before you go to sleep. You put it on a cloth. Right, like this. A towel. A towel, right? right? Okay. And so you pour it on it nicely, and it's nice and warm. Then right. what you do is, you put it around your neck, especially for a singer where your vocal cords are, which is in the front. Yeah. And you keep it mm. nice and warm. Then, to even keep it warmer, you do this. You take some plastic, any type of plastic that you can, and you wrap it around like this, and yeah. you go to sleep. If you can. Yeah, right. you wouldn't want to go to dinner in Right, this. don't go out with this. No. No, Okay. No. But yeah. you, you sleep with this, and usually in the morning, it just, it, I don't know, I guess the oil and the warmth brings it through, and you actually feel much better in your throat. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. this is wonderful. This yeah. is wonderful. Now, it, I've noticed even today, because I'm talking so much because I don't have my partner here, you yes, know? Yes, I, I understand. Yes. <laughs> Horses. I have a tendency to get hoarse, mm -hmm. and I have a lot of friends mm -hmm. that, that have a tendency to get hoarse yeah. if they yak a lot, which yeah. we do. Yeah. Do you have a remedy well, for that? This is from L Lily Lehman. <laughs> Lily Lehman? <laughs> Lily Lehman in the 1800s. She would do this, and this is really good also. Okay. I mean, if you don't have a throat lozenge, which it really won't get to the vocal cord, but this will, and if you don't have a, a, something to steam up, you take this, you put this in a nice, simple water flow. You put hot water on it, mm -hmm. and you put it over your nose and your mouth, and you breathe. And if you sing, if you're a singer, you vocalize. Or if you speak, then you would speak. And, and you speak holding this so that all of the moisture actually through the vibration of the cords will go on your vocal cords, you oh, see? Oh, I see. So which, I, which will not happen if you drink. It passes through them. Yeah. Yeah, well, how do you feel about this, the steam maybe on a yes, pan? Is that, that would, yeah, with but the towel you, over yeah, it? Yeah, you can do that. But if you're in a hotel, you can't really do that that yeah. well. So this, I found, is really fantastic. How long would you do that? I would start in the morning before I... I'm dying because I can't sing because I'm so my, my, I'm so dry. Yeah. I said early in the morning, and I would do it 15 minutes and then another 15 minutes, and by the evening I could sing high notes like like you can't, yeah, believe. You can't believe, and you can't believe it. You got to see her sometime. <laughs> Julie McGinnis, thank you so thank much. You. Nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you. Good tips. Next, Keely Shay Smith will show you how to make beautiful paper mosaics from magazines. going to be with Keely Shea Smith in just a moment, but guess what? We have Gary Collins on the phone. He's on the airplane. He's on the plane. Gary, can you hear me? I can hear you. There's a little interference up here, Dana. How are you? I'm fine. Where are you? I'm great. Well, I miss you, first of all, and we are, uh, let's see, we're over Python, Utah, okay. and we're up at uh, 33,000 feet. Uh, just zooming along at 645 miles an hour, and it's minus 50 degrees outside. Oh, my. Well, did you get to sleep in a little bit today? I don't know. There's some kind of interference. Let me just tell you what's going on, and then if, if the interference clears up, uh, we'll go on. Uh, you know, at the moment, there's a movie on. It's called uh, uh, Flashback with Dennis Hopper. Which is kind of oh, we're losing him. And it's very dark in here. We've got another uh, we can't hear him. Doggone it. Well, he's, in, he's over Utah. We did find that out, and you saw our crack staff had the little airplane going through. So we'll follow him. If we get him back, we'll bring him back on. But right now, we're with Keely Shea Smith. Please welcome her. And Keely has brought along a friend of hers who is a wonderful paper mosaics artist. Please welcome Michael Evans. Yes. Hi, Michael. Hi, Come on up here. Yep, right in. You have brought along some examples of your work, yeah, and I... it is fabulous. Let me back up here so we can see some of them. Could you describe them for us? This is uh, actually my piece. I call it The Lady in Red. Yeah. Yeah. If you notice, like, the skin tone, the face is all done with magazine paper, chips that I cut up. And I'm starting a new process now. If you notice, her dress is all done with red ribbon. 
The background, oh, yeah, it is yeah, ribbon. You see the ribbon, you and the it? background is ribbon, and this is all done with mirrored tile. Oh, that is and absolutely. If you notice beautiful. around the edges of the dress, it's all done with iridescent paper, oh, so it changes beautiful. colors. And yeah. the surfer over here, that's magazine, right? This is this is all magazine. All yeah. magazine pages. I mean, just pages from magazines that you've cut out and put. That together. I've cut up. If you notice, the blue is all magazine paper that is actually water. Mm -hmm. And this was a portrait of a friend of mine. It was kind of like a double dare challenge type thing that he wanted to see if I could actually do it. Yeah. So what I've done is recreated his whole portrait in mosaic. Okay, and this is gorgeous. This piece I call Gypsy. If you notice all the blue, the black, and the white, it's all done with wrapping paper. Uh huh. And this is my dog, Gypsy. I've started doing uh, portraits of dogs and different type there's of animals. Dog right there. Yeah, that's my dog, Gypsy. Yeah. And if you notice to my left, I've started my first series of dinosaurs. Oh, can we see that over there? Over that there. is fabulous. That's Thank quite you. a large work. How long does it take you to do a piece like that? That piece actually took me about five months. Five months. Yeah. And it's all done with different browns of skin color tones. Yeah. Now, it's, it's something takes five months, and it takes a lot of patience. A lot can of I patience. ask what you charge for some of your work? I charge between, I start, my smaller pieces start off at 1200 and they go all the way up to $8,000. Yeah, well, they're gorgeous. Well, Keely, you have been, let's step over I here. Got yeah. been, I got a private <laughs> lesson. It was so Giving you her wonderful. some lessons. How are oh, you doing with it? Great. Yeah? Really good. Yeah, I, okay. uh, it was the perfect opportunity to clean out all those magazines from my garage and house that we all have so many of. Yeah. And I didn't have to buy anything special, Dana. I just grabbed some push pins that I had at home, a couple different varieties of glue, and I experimented with the kind that you draw on, anything like white glue or, or uh, Elmer's glue. I I also used uh, a paintbrush so I could spread it, and then I got a little teeny uh, push pin. You can use push pins or needles or sewing needles. And mm -hmm. actually, because the handle was so small, I grabbed a cork and put it in the end like Michael had recommended, so it gave me something really easy to work with. Right, it wouldn't hurt your fingers. Exactly. For so the next hours step. Hours of work. Yeah, it's safer that way. Yeah. Grab a little piece of paper like this. This is a watercolor paper. You can use poster board and sketch out the design that you want, and that will determine the colors that you're going to use. And so essentially, you'll just choose pages from the magazine accordingly, like Michael said, blue for the water mm -hmm. or skin tones, you know, accordingly. And then Michael gave me a technique on how to cut the paper which I'm going to let him Here, demonstrate because this is tricky. Okay, and I'm assuming you put all of your blues in one box, all you of want your to put reds, all, all yellows. Of your reds. You don't want to mix it because you don't want to have too many different colors. It, you kind of lose the concentration of what you're actually doing. If the red was in here, I would, wouldn't think too much about the blue water. Right. So right. you want to have different boxes for different colors. Okay. Show and us in how the process, you cut these. I mean, okay. there's a little technique to this. Yeah, there's, there's a little technique. You want to cut everything in strips, and then you have to realize when you're doing a mosaic, as you, the one Keely has done, there are different angles. So you want to get in and, and have enough pieces to fill in all your spaces. Okay. So you want to start like this, and then you also, and you want to cut your pieces and try to get as many different angles as you can. So and you squares, need large squares, rectangles. Squares, triangles, rectangles, because you notice when you put your larger pieces down, you might find there's a little empty spot in between the, the larger pieces. So yeah. then you have your smaller pieces. To just fit in there. And you want some really, really tiny pieces for the corners. Really, and really edges tiny. And it depends like on the area. Like if you're going to do an eye, like I, the lady in red, when you do her eye, you mm -hmm. see that it's very small pieces. Right, right. For the detail, okay, this what? took five, five days. <laughs> five days so far. Let me see. Whoops. Five days. I can hold this no, up. So you. Pretty. There, that's oh, we're the losing our push pins. pins there. But we've got the yeah. islands in the back and the water and the green. And then you just take the small shapes and you're going to put them inside. Okay, well, let's try one here. You want to use sure. this kind of glue okay. or what kind do you want? Michael, what? Let's see if this, uh, this one's not here. open. How about this Let's one. use this one. Here. We use this right okay. here. Okay. And show us how you do that. Do you have a, you can use the cork. Okay, we're going to use here. the cork. And if you hand me that brush over there. All right. Okay, thank you. You want to just make sure that you, you glue just a small area because the glue tends to dry. And you don't want to use very much glue, I you would assume. You don't want to use very much glue. Because it would show through. It like changes this. the shape of the paper, too, if it gets oh, too soggy. You're going to take that yeah, thank you. Yeah, all Okay, and you, you know, you look in your box and you figure out the pieces that will fit in there. Okay, and you just use... Sometimes your needle slips a little. You just use a shoe box. Yeah, I use a shoe lid. box. The shoe box lid because if you, it's, it's funny. The shoe box lid is cushion. Mm -hmm. So when I stick my pen in, it's not a hard surface and the pen goes right through the paper. Right, right. Just, I mean, little things, but they will right. really help you. If they you're... speed up the process a little. And Keely, you had a great idea. You said children could do this. You could just cut out larger, larger shapes, of... exactly, to make flowers or numbers or letters. They could do the alphabet. It's really yeah. fun. And for that, I'd recommend the stick glue, you know, so it's not messy at home. Very okay. simple for them. Any advice while Michael's doing this for people who may want to tackle a Absolutely. project like this? Absolutely. Be patient. Take your time and, and really enjoy yourself. 
yeah. because it will take some time. You're not going to have this ready for Father's Day. Sorry to tell yeah. you. Right. Yeah. Maybe next Christmas. year. Maybe next year. It's a good <laughs> Christmas project. All right. Thank you, Michael and Keeley. Thank, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. And next, we have some great gift ideas for Dad and the kids to play with. And Thelma Williams has an easy way to spruce up any summer party table with grapefruit baskets. show you some great Father's Day gifts, but first, here with some delicious grapefruit baskets is food consultant Thelma Williams. Welcome back. Hi, David. Good to see you. Good to see you. You're so bright and cheery, and you have well, brought along a bright and cheery idea. This is a great idea. Thank you. It's thank a great you. way to serve food at parties. It is, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So what us. you do is just take your grapefruit basket, and you have the whole grapefruit, take some masking tape, go around the whole grapefruit, and make sure you go through the navel, Okay. turn it on its side, cut it in half. And in the interest of time, we've done that, so we've cut that in half. Right. Now you insert a knife on one side of the masking tape, and you go all around. Just You're just cutting through the rind. Right, right? exactly, right. Okay. And then on the other side, okay? okay. Now, you're going to take your sections, remove your sections of the grapefruit with the grapefruit knife. And what I do is I take the knife, after I remove the sections, and gently go on that fleshy part of the uh, grapefruit. And put your hands in there and just scoop it out. Uh -huh. Okay, you can see how I've begun to move that away. Oh, there. that comes See? out right, very right. easily. And it looks like this. Okay. Now you gently take your two handles together. Isn't that neat? You've got your basket. <laughs> right. Look at this. Tie that with um, either some um, florist wire mm -hmm. or, like yeah, this. just like that. Yeah. I'm going to prove that anyone can do it here. <laughs> okay. Good. And can... depending on whatever the occasion is, yes, a little bit of garnish there. <laughs> a little, you just little stick leaf. this in here. Exactly. All right. And yeah, depending on the occasion, you brought along some right. of this. But see, that's, that kind of gives you an idea. Yeah. And <laughs> kind of what idea. I like about this idea is anyone can do it. Anyone can it do it. It doesn't that. take an artiste. And you know, grapefruits are in season now. What a perfect way to make it because it can be a container for sauce if you'd like. Or here, let's we've start, done let's start graduation here. time. So we've made some little diplomas out of uh, the Japanese school. Um, radish oh, and just yeah. decorated that, use that this? for our little salad. Wonderful. And the and little diploma down yeah. there. <laughs> and over here, we've made a basket, and I didn't explain before, but if you like that little jagged edge, just use your scissors and cut out little, you know, zigzags, mm -hmm. right? Fill right. that with fruit and make a nice little garnish for a bridal shower. I know what this you is. You know for. what that's, July 4th is coming. I mean, these got to be very patriotic here. Yeah. And this is an empty shell, which we could Let's use for, so we for a little um, bridal shower. Oh, how And then cute. you could fill that with fruit or with a sauce, you know, whatever you feel that you like to have Just in anything. there. Right. Salad, not a sauce. And here we use this container for a grapefruit um, souffle. Great ideas. Right Thank you so much. You're so good. Thank you. Good, good to see you. you. Bella will be back right now. Over here we have Dallas Brains. <laughs> I knew Dallas that was going to happen. Dallas and Todd Tingey with a great Father's Day gift idea. It's a way to play an old, the old game of dodgeball. It's actually called Fireball. These guys are going to kill each other, you guys. Dana, it's a same. combination of dodgeball and fencing that can be played in the backyard, the beach, or the park, anywhere. And, you know, Todd, yeah. you, you are with the manufacturer who makes this. Yeah, that's correct. I would have to say, just watching you two wild men go at it, that it's mostly for older children. <laughs> no, not at all. Actually, it's a, it's a game for uh, ten, 10 years old and up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the object of the game actually is to tag your opponent with the ball. And if you hit him with the ball, you get a point. Just like that, Eddie. You yeah. play to ten and you got to uh, win by two. Okay. And that's, that's the game of fireball. Oh, this is wonderful. Don't, what do you think, Dallas? Don't let, this thing can change the tone of your voice in a minute. <laughs> got to watch where you hit. Where? How much, whoa, how much does one, it huh? cost? They retail He's good at uh, between thing, 18 too. and $20. Uh, you can find them at sporting goods stores all around the country, um, as well as Champ Sports. Okay, See, and it's called even... Fireball. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think I'm losing. Okay, let's stop it, guys. I'm, oh, this is geez. dangerous here. Thank That's you, Todd. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Dallas, I'm going to come over here with okay. me. <laughs> nice one, Dallas. Bring this with me? Or... Now, Dallas, Keep that away. you do Good Morning America. You occasionally, do, yeah. yeah. Occasionally, you fill in for Spencer Christian, and you yeah. have to wake up mighty early. Well, I do that anyway. Yeah, or well, a.m. to do the morning show morning here at KBC, show. right? So we have some great Father's Day gift ideas. Hey, this hey. is for the father who has trouble waking up in the mornings, even if a herd of elephants can't make him wake <laughs> up. Listen to this. Oh, well, that'll do it every time. Speaking Four o'clock in the morning, that'll be just right. 
Oh, and it has the kids the in there summer. for you, too. They record that in the night. Is that great? It's cute. Okay, now How listen, if that doesn't do the job. Okay. <laughs> wait. Put that right in your ear, you know? Wait, wait. Rise and shine! <laughs> I love it. I think I met this guy down at Camp Pendleton. Yeah, he, he was there. That's great, and these are available. How much um, are these little guys? The they're like forty nine ninety five. Oh, but really? They're, they're great. cute. They're a great like alternative those. to the uh, to the alarm clock. I think so. I'll take one home tonight. Here you go. And put Thanks it right for... by my ear here. This is for the damage done to you for, by the fireball thing. <laughs> That's right. Thank I'll you. get it from both ends. That's Thanks, great. Dana. And we'll be right back. <laughs> is that great? This is cute. <laughs> Gary, back on the line. Now, Gary, are you there? Yes. Oh, that's much better. Where yeah. are you now? Well, I think there's something, a uh, problem with reception over Utah. But now we're <laughs> over Colorado, so we're, we're in much better shape. I think Aspen and Snowmass are below. Oh, Snowmass. That's great. I've been there before. Yeah, now, you're, what time do you arrive, and what are your plans for the day? Well, I, well tonight's the Water Festival Parade. Right. And uh, we, I think we get in there. Joel is going to meet me, and uh, we'll just barely make it for the parade. The parade starts at 6. And you know something, I didn't realize, you know, I'm not sure that I know what's going on at this parade. For example, at Mardi Gras, New Orleans, you know, people throw things off the floats and they throw things back on. Right. I remember Al Hurt got hit in the mouth one time. Uh -oh. you, don't think, you don't think people are going to throw water at me, do you? They won't throw water. You guys up there in, in Michigan, please <laughs> anyway, be nice I miss to all Gary. you guys. I miss you. Okay, well, we miss you too, but we'll see you tomorrow on remote. Thank you, Gary. Thank bye bye. You. We'll also have our thousand dollar winner. So, and I'll be holding down the fort from here, and Lee Remick will tell us about surviving cancer. Movie Mom reviews Dick Tracy. Diane Thomas uh, shows us how to make linen vases. They're beautiful. And Leon Kaplan will tell us about a garage door safety test. So, we'll see you tomorrow, and Gary will be in Michigan. Bye bye, everybody. Spend your morning at home. If you're in the Los Angeles area or planning a visit, we'd like you to be part of our studio audience. Send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Home Show Tickets in care of ABC Guest Services, 4151 Prospect Avenue, Hollywood, California, 90027.